for joining. Really appreciate you all you all taking the time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get, get kicked off. I do want to make some quick introductions. Uh, my name is Jeremy Mathis. I'm an account partner here at Fathom. Uh, Fathom is a digital marketing firm headquartered here in Cleveland. Uh, and we are fortunate enough to work with um, a number of the largest, most well-known names in healthcare. Um, and so today's topic, uh, talking about uh, streaming audio advertising specifically for the healthcare market, uh, something I'm very passionate about. Um, and I'm very excited to have Anna Clement here with us in, in Cleveland uh, from SXM Media. So Anna, thanks for joining. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, for those of you who are not, well, I'm the director of SXM Media's healthcare vertical. And for those of you who may not be familiar, SXM Media is the newly formed advertising group comprised of Pandora, uh, SiriusXM Satellite, and our SiriusXM podcast network. So what we did was we combined all of our platforms under the umbrella of SXM Media to make it as turnkey as possible for marketers to reach the largest addressable audience um, across digital audio in the United States. All right, a few logistical items before we dive in. Um, number one, we will leave some time for Q&A at the end. So if you do have questions, um, hang on to those. We, we will leave about uh, 10 minutes or so at the end of the session to answer any of those. Um, also, I know how I am on webinars, right? And if something comes to mind, I may wanna ask it right away. So if you do have something that you don't wanna forget, please feel free to put it in the chat. We will be collecting those and then we can answer those um, at the end as well. Um, and then lastly, if you're willing and able, uh, we'd love to have your, your cameras on. It always makes it a little more uh, personal when we can see your faces and you can see our faces. So um, happy to, uh, to do that and have a, have a good conversation today. To kind of set the stage for, for where we are, um, I, I think we've all seen and felt just the continued growth in streaming audio um, really since the pandemic. Um, and so a couple of stats that, that have really jumped out at me, um, we finally have seen uh, streaming audio surpass traditional radio in audio consumption. And that happened uh, about a year and a half ago, I believe. Um, and the latest stat that I saw is now about 55% of all audio consumption um, is taking place digitally. Um, so one of the things that, that we're seeing is that, that obviously is going to continue to grow um, and, as we move forward. Um, another stat that I thought was, was a really interesting piece was there is um, the average consumer now is spending about an hour and 43 minutes um, consuming streaming audio every single day. Um, and that is more than what people are consuming for traditional TV, uh, social media, and streaming video. Um, so really, really interesting when you think about the devices we have, the access we have to all sorts of, of media um, and information on those devices, um, that out of all of those, streaming audio is, is really ranking in very highly with, with almost two hours a day of consumption. Um, so Anna, with that, I uh, wanted to get your, your take on, now that we are seeing uh, consumption continuing to grow, um, there's obviously a lot of room for us to, as advertisers, to engage and, and reach out to our audiences. Um, how are you seeing the shift? I know um, even you know, taking budget dollars from traditional media, moving that over to digital, um, what are you seeing in, in, in the audio space? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, it's really interesting. So consumers today are spending 31% of their media time with audio, but marketers are only allocating 9% of their media budgets towards the audio medium. So for an industry like healthcare that has historically relied you know, very heavily on visual mediums like television, Audio is a real opportunity to you know, outpace the competition by reaching a relatively untapped audience. Um, so healthcare marketers are really using streaming audio to differentiate their brand in what we know is a really crowded marketplace. Um, and you don't have as much of that like sea of sameness in, in audio as you do on, on visual platforms. Yeah, so from your perspective, I'm curious, you know, on the agency side, what, you, what, what is the biggest challenge facing healthcare marketers today? Yeah, it, absolutely. I, I think it's a challenge um, that we see really across the board with marketers, um, but especially so in, in healthcare, um, really revolves around uh, proving an ROI, mm -hmm. right? And we, we're continuing to see um, a lot more pressure on really showing a return for our marketing efforts. Um, with healthcare, what, what's compounding that even further um, is really that, that push that we've seen over the last 18 to 24 months um, around data privacy and, and a lot of concerns there. Um, so when you put those two pieces together, it can make it really difficult for healthcare marketers to, one, track the efforts that, that we're putting forward, um, and two, then to take that further and show the return that we're bringing. Um, so I, I think this, whenever there's a challenge, right, I always think that there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think 
working through this with a number of our partners, I, I see an opportunity for us to um, really look a little bit differently at the metrics that, mm -hmm. that we're um, having exposure to um, and really looking to engage others in the organization um, to really get a little bit deeper with, with how we're measuring and, and showing success. Um, talking about measurement, um, and, and, and I know you and I were talking earlier this week, and this I found this really, really interesting. Um, there was a recent study that just came out by Lumen, um, and they were showing how uh, streaming audio really outperformed a lot of other um, advertising platforms, including video, mm -hmm. um, especially within brand recall. Um, so I'd love to get your take on that yeah. and maybe share a little bit about that study um, and then maybe your perspective on why streaming audio performs so well. Yeah, it was a really neat study. It was like the first of its kind. Um, there's really three contributing factors. The first has to do with, and I'm sure we can all relate to this, you know, we're kind of suffering from an excessive amount of visual stimulation on a daily basis. Um, the World Health Organization actually just reported that half of the, the world's global population will suffer from nearsightedness by the year 2050. Um, you know, and they're attributing it in large part due to the fact that kids are just spending so many hours per day staring at their devices. Um, meanwhile, research shows that um, consumers are actually using streaming music and podcasts as an escape. Um, so 52% of our own listeners, because we do our own listener surveys, say that they're you know, streaming audio on a daily basis as a, to using it as a reprieve um, from just an excessive amount of visual stimulation. Yeah, and then the second factor um, is, has to do with personalization. You know, the audio, the streaming audio environment um, is highly personal. For example, on Pandora, you know, people are curating the kinds of songs and podcasts they want to listen to. And there's a strong affinity for brands that show up in an environment that the listener themselves has created. So you're kind of benefiting, you know, from that. And then the third factor is it really just has to do with the low ad load. Um, so on Pandora, for example, we serve less than five minutes of ads every hour versus, you know, up to the 17 minutes of ads you can be served on television. Yeah, so a good opportunity to differentiate in the audio environment. That's great. Appreciate it. Um, so what, in your in your opinion, what role does digital audio play, you know, in your client's broader marketing strategies? How have you guys been using it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, specific to healthcare, we've seen um, our clients, our, our partners utilize um, streaming audio mainly in the upper funnel stage, right? Mm -hmm. So just due to the fact that it does perform very well for, for brand awareness. Um, we are seeing most of our clients utilize um, streaming audio at that upper funnel uh, tactic. Um, we do see it perform really well when we pair it up with um, other tactics in market as well. Mm -hmm. So it works really well when you have other awareness tactics in market, like programmatic display, um, even at the consideration set with social media. Um, and uh, we really like to pair it up if there is a, a you know, a use case for it um, with some lower funnel tactics as well. So when you have um, tactics like streaming audio in market that can generate some of that demand, um, always a great idea to pair that up with paid search or other lower funnel tactics um, that you can capture some of that demand um, and see some of that net out into, you know, conversions in this case, you know, appointments and that sort of thing. Um, interestingly though, you know, with healthcare it tends to be more upper funnel um, with some of our other clients, we've seen them use streaming audio really all the way through the buyer's journey. Mm -hmm. um, and that there's even been some use cases, I know that you're familiar, um, where we've been able to see conversions through uh, paid uh, audio advertising, uh, which is a really interesting case. And I don't know that that was necessarily expected, mm -hmm. um, but, it, but it's definitely something that can play a role uh, throughout the whole buyer's journey. Absolutely. Yeah, that's um, another reason healthcare marketers are really leveraging streaming audio because we kind of accomplish goals, you know, throughout the full funnel, uh, you know, whether it's driving appointments or, yeah, spreading awareness. And, and what's nice too, and you, and you mentioned this previously, um, the ability to reach and, and share a message with your audience um, even if they're not necessarily in front of a screen. So mm -hmm. if they're using audio to escape from, uh, you know, the visual stimulation that they're getting or just to kind of pull away from the day, um, they're hearing it as they're, you know, driving to work or going for a run or working out or whatever, um, you're still able to deliver that message and they don't necessarily have to be at a computer or on their phone, uh, which is a really nice, nice benefit for us as Absolutely. well. Um, so with that, I, I guess the, the one, one question I wanted to, wanted to pick your brain on is if you could give one piece of advice to healthcare marketers, mm -hmm. or if there's one missing opportunity that you see that most of those, most, those of us in the space maybe are not paying attention to right now, um, what would you recommend? What would you tell them? 
Yeah. So that full stop podcast okay. podcasts are an incredible yeah. opportunity for healthcare marketers for a variety of reasons. Um, there are 116 million Americans listening to podcasts every month. So the medium itself is just completely exploded. Um, and the if you listen to are you a podcast listener? I am. I yeah. am. Yes. I mean, people, run. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a heavy podcast consumer, but people are obsessed, and that kind of obsession um, that that consumers feel towards the hosts and and the shows that they listen to really carries over to the brands that are supporting the medium. Um, there's a research study that was conducted recently that showed podcast ads score the highest on attributes like, you know, the brand, the, the consumer thinks the brand is informative, trustworthy, relevant, and that um, that scored higher when compared to social ads on social, television, um, online video, and AM, FM. It's also a really qualified audience for healthcare specifically because 92% of podcast listeners have health insurance, uh, and one in five uh, podcast listeners say they've made an appointment with a doctor as a direct result of hearing a podcast ad. And, you know, the experience itself is is very leaned in, you know, you're there to learn something. So it's a great place to serve a message. Uh, so not surprisingly that there was a 25% increase in year over year ad spend um, in podcasting this year. So it's, it's really great opportunity for healthcare marketers. And we're seeing a lot take advantage of it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, following up on that, um, wait, why do you feel that there that healthcare marketers aren't taking advantage of that now. Is there just a, a knowledge gap or a, a newer newer medium that haven't been involved in or is there more yeah. involved? Yeah, well, we're, we, we see a ton of our clients, um, you know, tapping into podcasting. Another reason uh, is because when you partner with us, we've done studies that show when you add podcasting to your streaming music campaign, you're getting on average like a 43% incremental reach. So for a local healthcare marketer, that's obviously very valuable to get a new audience. Uh, but we're seeing, I mean, every day we get new more, more healthcare marketers and podcasts. Yeah. But it's, it's a, you know, still one of the more newer, um, one of the newer mediums. So it's, it's, you know, people are adopting it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, great. Um, well, appreciate the conversation. I did promise some QA time. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. Um, I did want to open it up for any participants. If there are questions that you have either for me or for Anna, um, would love to take those now. Um, if not, we have we have a few other topics we wanted to hit, but I did want to leave, leave a little bit of time for you all. I can ask a question. So with the increase of use of podcasts and audio streaming services, what do you see as the future, especially for the healthcare marketing space with this kind of form format? Yeah. yeah great question. Yeah, you, you probably have uh, have some thoughts. I know I do for uh, for healthcare specifically, but I'll let you. Dive yeah. In. So I, you know, as more and more research um is published regarding the the negative effects or the negative impacts of social media um, on our mental health, you know, compounded with the spread of mis misinformation across social platforms. I think we'll we'll begin to see a, a substantial shift um, in marketing dollars, you know, m moving away from social and onto platforms like streaming audio that has been scientifically proven to benefit, you know, mental and emotional and physical well being. So I think it's, I mean, we're already seeing the shift. So I think it's a real opportunity. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to say, I know that I know we touched on it at the very beginning, but I think as um, as more marketers are looking to think about their advertising dollars differently, right? Where it's always been maybe traditionally in um, out of home advertising or, um, you know, traditional radio or, or TV, um, there's definitely an opportunity to, to shift some of those dollars, think a little bit differently about how we can reach a very targeted audience right. um, and, you know, reap the benefits that, that we've been talking through um, with, with streaming audio. So I think definitely, you know, a lot to come in the future. And I think, you know, we'll see continued uh, increases in this as we're moving forward. And I would just add to that, you know, Gen Z uh, is finally a, an audience that healthcare marketers are starting to pay attention yes. to because they represent 40% of U.S. consumers. So it's a huge consumer base, really important to speak to them now. And their media habit, media consumption habits are just fundamentally different than any generation before them. You know, only 12% are watching new, news on television, right? They're, they're super streamers. So I think we'll see. Yeah, yeah, that, that that's a great point, and I know that that's already been a big shift for a lot of our clients as well. Is taking a look at that younger generation, mm -hmm. um, knowing that you know if you can build a relationship with someone now, um, you know, as they are you know maybe getting their first job or or having their first child or getting married, um, it's a great opportunity to 
build that affinity with your brand early on, um, that can obviously, you know, net out in, in a lifetime of, um, of, of care provided for their family. So it's a, it's a great point. Um, I have one. What do you guys tend to see in terms of best practices when it comes to attribution? So whether healthcare marketers are looking to do digital audio as part of an awareness tactic, like, is it, you know, are we really just still talking about, you know, impressions, number of audio spots played, you know, in terms of the reporting metrics? Um, and then, you know, when you have more of a direct response focused advertiser, um, is it, you know, things like using vanity uh, phone numbers and stuff to try to get that attribution? Like just what are you guys kind of seeing advertisers do in that space? Yeah, great, great question, Will. I really, really appreciate you diving in. Yeah, that that has been the biggest focus that I've seen in the healthcare space over, um, like I said, over, over especially these last 18 months. Um, I, I don't know that there is that that one silver bullet that works for everyone, right? Um, so in a lot of cases, you know, we, we've had to take a step back to look more at, at those vanity metrics. Um, what I'm seeing more of now is, is a pivot to, you know, how do we get more access to some of the financial data, um, some of the capacity data as far as, you know, what appointments are being uh, driven. Um, even if we can't necessarily attribute that directly to marketing, if we lost that that space in the middle, um, being able to show a lift or an impact on capacity at uh, certain facilities, um, you know, certain service lines, that's been a way to um, kind of open up the mind of what marketing can do and, and how we can show some of those results. Uh, but everything that that you mentioned are, are things that that we're seeing, you know, um, specific, uh, you know, landing pages that obviously are only being driven to by paid media ad advertising is, is one way to, to show that, um, you know, vanity uh, phone numbers and that sort of thing is another way to, to, to track that. Um, again, I think this is a space that we are going to continue to see a lot of evolution on. Um, and uh, spoiler alert, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this um, at the HCIC conference in November uh, with three of our, our, our clients out there. So um, if you're coming, hope you can join us there because I think that's going to be a big, big topic. I'll be there as well, speaking. That's um, right. About podcasts. <laughs> I do have a, I have one quick question just about, I know we were talking about pest practices um, targeting wise. Um, I know you talked about that Gen Z market, that's important to target them, but it's also important to target the people that are coming back again and again. So I don't know if you have any best practices for digital audio targeting in healthcare. Um, that would be something I'd like to learn about. Yeah. Um, well, we, you know, our Pandora's collecting over a billion data points on our listeners every single day. Uh, so we have a ton of first party proprietary uh, segments. Um, we also partner with third party data providers like CrossX, if some of you are familiar. Um, so we recommend, you know, combining both first party and third party targeting. Um, but speaking of best practices, it's also recommended that, you know, if you are looking to drive some, some of those lower funnel conversions that you, you, you utilize a combination of audio and display and video on our platform of which, you know, we have products, we have a million products that you can leverage and they're all very successful, especially when used together. Uh, so if you were looking to reach, you know, it just depends on the action you want your audience to take, but we take, we utilize targeting and a multi-product approach. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Thanks, Emma. We do have time for maybe one or two more before uh, before we wrap. Okay. And any any questions come through on uh, on chat that we may have missed? No, but I was just um, messaging you that you could each share one key takeaway you hope resonates with the audience for how they can implement this into their marketing strategy. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, for for me, I, I really think, you know, again, just um, the opportunity to differentiate um, how you're bringing your message to marketing, I think is something that that's really been been a key for us. Um, you know, obviously you got to take into account the goal of what you're looking to accomplish, the audience, um, as well as the, you know, the budget and any resource constraints that you may have. Um, but, you know, we've really seen a lot of success when utilizing streaming audio with other forms of, of advertising. Um, as I mentioned up front, right, when you pair this with, with different pieces, um, really tends to work well for, for our partners. 
Um, and so something, if you're not taking advantage of it already, um, I would highly recommend taking a look at it, um, run a test, see how it performs, see how it's working and, and what you're seeing lift wise um, on some of those metrics that we're looking at um, compared to some of your other um, you know, digital advertising pieces. I, I think you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised there. Um, and I don't know if I stole your thought. No, or that's else. music to my ears. Um, I would say if, if you know people only remember one thing about today, uh, just the, the fact that people are spending, you know, like we talked about earlier, 31% of their media time with audio and marketers are only allocating 9% of their marketing budgets towards audio. And that, that percentage is actually lower for healthcare marketers. So it's just a huge opportunity, especially during this sea of sameness that we're experiencing in, in the healthcare marketing landscape. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, well, I do want to thank you all for, for the time today. I really appreciate it. Um, it's a great conversation. Um, obviously, a, a passion for, for myself and for Anna. Um, so love these types of conversations. Um, if there are other questions, um, don't hesitate to, you know, hit us up on LinkedIn. You know, I'm sure our, our emails will be out there. You can, you can look us up. Um, we'd love to have more of these conversations. Um, and like I mentioned, Anna and I will both be presenting at HCIC in Los Angeles coming up the first week of November. Um, I'll be there with a few of our uh, clients, Sharp Healthcare, Stanford Health, and Penn Medicine, uh, talking about the, you know, the, the question that we got earlier, tagging, tracking, um, and how do we show return in, in the new age of, uh, of healthcare marketing. Um, and, and Anna, you're going to be presenting on, on podcast advertising. Exactly. Yeah, I'll be with um, our Hartford Health healthcare client uh, talking about how to incorporate podcasting into your marketing strategy. Wonderful. Well, thank you all again. Appreciate the time. Hope, uh, hope you found it enjoyable. Take care.